30 cars on the grid at the moment. One in pit lane. We understand Steve Owen, car number 55, the Autobahn entry, hasn't joined the rest of the grid just yet. There he is. They had to replace a starter motor at the last minute. Thing wouldn't fire up of its own accord. So the Rod Nash Racing Autobahn Steve Owen entry will start from an awkward end of the lane there. Here we are, Oran Park and 11 turns for the Jim Beam 400. 2.62 kilometres, this popular racetrack. And as I said earlier in the telecast, only one third of this racetrack is spent at 100% throttle. The rest of the time, you're delicately balancing the car, including this area, turns nine and 10, the dog leg, which last year caught out Max Wilson. Very easy to make a mistake here. You can see as you crest the top of the hill, it's blind. If you do make it blue, there's some dirt out there to capture you together with the tyres, but it's a minimum speed through the S's of about 170 kilometres an hour, and it's certainly a critical part of the racetrack where the cars are very easily taken offline. Lots of action occurs up there week in, week out. Peter Brock took pole here in 1997, the first race of the supercar era. Greg Murphy won that one. Craig Lowndes is the defending champion at Oran Park. He also won back in 1998, so Lowndes has won here in a Commodore and a Falcon. Scaife, the best of the modern bunch. Four straight victories from 99 through to 2002 inclusive. His teammate Todd Kelly will start this one from position one. Here's the Fuso grid, race one, round eight. The Jim Beam 400 at Oran Park. Kelly, the third pole for 2007. Tander, the fourth front row start for the season. Scaife, alongside Lee Holdsworth, who will start from his best ever position of fourth. Rick Kelly in fifth. Mark Winterbottom is the best of the Fords in sixth. And then we've got Jason and Stephen Richards side by side. The Tasman Motorsport. What a different tale it is between Jason and Greg Murphy. Jamie Wincup from position nine and Jason Bright in 10. And likewise for Wing Cup and his teammate, Craig Lowndes, who we'll find a lot later. Will Davison and Paul Morris. Morris is really stringing together a good run of consistent results. And there is Canto and Russell Ingle, who was in and out, in and out, and ended up out of the top 10 throughout the qualifying session. This is going to be uh, an awkward position to be in for the start of this race. This midfield pack area at the moment, as we look at Paul Dumbrell, Stevie Johnson's car caught up with Stephen before. They, they just didn't quite get the car right when they needed to. Yesterday they had a tough day with the Jim Beam 17 car. They weren't on good rubber and the car didn't respond. James Courtney a long way back due to the misfire problem. They've now cured that, but he's got a huge job ahead of him. And so is this man, Craig Lowndes. Worst qualifying performance of 2007, the previous worst was Eastern Creek, 16th. But if you recall, he fought his way through all three races to be a factor in race number three, but it's even tougher now this weekend. But the point I wanted to make about the mid-pack, Matthew, was that when they get down to turn three, the right-hander, it's a very tight, twisty situation down there where the cars are nose to tail and invariably year in year out there's a big nose to tail shunt down there and when you're in the mid pack it's often a real problem so we'll watch for that at the start of the race. If you have just joined us you might have noticed car 021 from position number 29 Shane Van Gisbergen the 18 year old Kiwi making his V8 supercar debut. We wish him all the best and it's great to have Team Kiwi Racing back in action so we've got a full field of 31 cars another thing to watch for on this race track is the race line tends to narrow because of the number of people that climb curbs and drag dirt onto the circuit there'll be a low tolerance for that in race control if people bring up too much garbage they will be dealt with for Mark Winterbottom fans, it looked like it was going to be a disastrous start to the weekend for him. As we know, they had a bent strut in qualifying, in practice, sorry, on Friday. And as it turns out, they had to go into qualifying with an absolute guesswork of setup combinations. It turned out to be a ripper. Mark's now in sixth position, but as the team are saying at the moment, well, we don't really know how we're going to go in terms of lap distance. We haven't yet done the miles. We just need to get past turn two. That could be a problem for a lot of people. Is Russell Ingle, one of our onboard cameras, 
Now thanks to Grant Daniel. Grant's joined by Daniel Gibson and Mark Breda in pit lane for this race. And here is Max Wilson, the Brazilian. As uh, Neil mentioned, he's um, seen this track from a view he'd rather not. Upside down. We'll be on board also with Cameron McConville and the super cheap auto car number 50. A little tricky with the audio, boys, but I got you now. Uh, both Vodafone cars, interestingly, during qualifying, both cars actually ran the same setup. Go figure. One qualifies ninth. Craig Lowndes qualifies 23rd. The poor qualifying result has uh, changed the strategy. They're just going to look at the weather and the turn two action. If it all plays out, expect Craig to come in late rather than early. Great day for Lee Holdsworth of Gary Rogers Motorsport. Starting from the second row of the grid, that's his best starting position ever. His previous best was he started sixth from the grid at Winton this year. Incidentally, his best ever result, he finished sixth on this circuit last year. He loves it here. He's starting alongside Mark Scaife. He's a little bit nervous about that, guys. Here we are on board with Rick Kelly. Thanks, Moretz. And Mark Scaife. Gee, the view that we had from this camera throughout the qualifying session when he was on that flying lap, a lap that could well have put him in the position that his teammates in. Just showed you how much fight there is in car number two at the moment. Paul Dumbrell. He'll start from 18th. It's a pretty long straight. They carry a lot of speed down to turn one and two. Two left-handers, big crowd in the background. And 46 laps is a fair haul around here, particularly for the rear tyres, which tend to get punished. The right rear gets worked very hard around here, and often you find it's a case of the walking wounded at the end of it, and they're slipping and sliding all over the place. Those teams and drivers that are able to look after their tyre condition best will be in a good shape at the end. Todd Kelly versus Garth Tander at the front. Behind them, it's Scaife and Holdsworth. Behind them, Kelly and Winterbottom. And a whole host of experience, pace, and hunger in the middle, all the way back. What's going on? I think there must be a problem. The car's been sitting there on the rev limiter forever. No. Revving back up again. We're underway for the Jim Beam 400. Tanda, a clean pair of heels, will be unchallenged into turn one. Scaife got around his teammate. So Todd Kelly has gone from pole to third. He'll have to fight off Winterbottom as the dust flies. Oh, one of the Jim Beam cars in trouble, and so is Jack Perkins. Rotates out into the dirt and rubbish here, he might get it out the other side and that'll spare us a safety right car, he does. Look at Tanda. Gee, Tanda didn't get that car turned well at turn four, he went right out in the wide stuff then on the dirty side of the racetrack. That was a weird start, there were a lot of people sitting there right on the rev limit when we joined Craig Lowndes, the car was shaking, I reckon he spent 15 or 20 seconds or more with the thing just bouncing its head off on the rev limiter. Maybe they all just decided to cook them up a bit early. One of the questions will be just how much dirt is down there at turn two when Jack Perkins went off and rejoined. So a good start by Scaife. Then it's Kelly, Winterbottom, Rick Kelly. Lee Holdsworth has gone from fourth down to seventh. That sound you can hear in the background is the front air dam scratching the road under brakes as they cross the big bump on the braking approach to turn one. The amount of dirt and dust down there at turn two as we look off the bridge. Here it is again in replay. Watch for the Jim Beam car to come spinning out of the pack. He almost went to the infield. Meantime, on the outside of the road, Jack Perkins rotates. A good save by Jack. Drags, unfortunately, a big pile of dirt on. I wouldn't be surprised if he has to come in to remove a bit of dirt around the front of that car if it's picked up and ingested some dirt into the radiator. And Russell Ingalls in. Damaged left rear.
Ingle started midfield from 14th position. Not allowed under the car without the incompressible jacks under there. Does it have something broken in the rear suspension? There's obviously concern with the car there at the moment. So Russell's race one is effectively done. Even if he gets back out there, he's not going to be a factor. So Tanda has the lead. Skate for second. Todd Kelly. Oh, look at this. Tanda's gone straight ahead down there at turn three. Something out. in the left front just failed. Okay, mate, we can see that. Just do the best to get it. It looks like it's uh, broken the steering or something. Component failure for Garth Tanda. He shot off at turn three. That gives Mark Scaife the lead. This is what happened. He never, ever made that turn. It was straight away the whole way. Do a massive amount of curb hopping here, which is real hard on the gear. And I wonder whether something's failed as a result. Scaife sails by. Kelly runs with him. Tand is on the outside of... Shane Price also comes in. I wonder if he was tangled up with his teammate in turn one or if it was Shane Van Gisbergen. Scaife leads the race. Fastest lap of the race for Scaife. 19.6 from Kelly's. 0.7 up on him. Three quarters of a second as they wheel the Russell Ingle car back into the garage. Yeah, that, that's right now. I can tell you that it's a broken watts linkage uh, for Russell from some contact on the left side when it was coming down pit lane. She was a little wider in the track on the left in the rear. It is a watts linkage. And that, when that bolt breaks, the whole rear end floats, and that's why the boys were concerned. They could see movement there. It's a relatively easy fix, but it's not the sort of thing that you can quickly fix and get him back out in the race and be effective. Remember, points are only scored from 1 to 15, and Steve Owen out of his race car, the Autobahn entry as well after a fraught start, beginning the race from pit lane. And Rick Kelly must have some pretty good pace at the moment because Mark Winterbottom has been doing good times, but look at Kelly closing in on him. You're looking out of Kelly's car up to Winterbottom, so up to position three. Focus on the front left on this car as Tanda goes to the garage and they try and work out what the problem is with the Toll HSV dealer team entry. So, the situation at the moment, Kelly's done the fastest lap of the race at 9.4. He's closing on his teammate. The margin's 0.4 of a second between Scaife and Kelly. There they are. Then a little gap back to Winterbottom under pressure from Kelly. Rick Kelly it is. And then in behind them, Jamie Wincup, Stephen Richards, Will Davison, Greg Murphy having a good run. Murph's bolted up the order. He's made up eight positions from the start. Started 16th, he's currently eighth. Well, there's all panic stations down here at Toll HSV thinking they could fix it, but they've, uh, well, they're basically, they're not too sure. I just spoke to Matty Nielsen Checo, who's the engineer looking after the car. He says, look, it's something in the front left suspension. We don't know whether it's due to curb hopping. As soon as they know, I'll let you know. Oh boy, talk about unlucky. Steve Owen, they had problem with the starter motor, that motor, they swapped it just before the start, managed to get him out there for the start of the race, but they've blown a clutch, they're back in the garage. So too is Paul Morris, broken an oil pump belt. Gee, there's some weirdness. Uh, yeah. Not good when we start talking at the opening about telecast about car reliability for the two key enduros at Sandown and Bathurst, when little things are failing and breaking. Let's have a look at the margins. Robbie Starr encouraging Scafey to have a breathe. He leads the race. He's got the margin back out to 0.7 of a second. That lap time was a 19.5 for Mark, a 19.8 for Todd. Compulsory pit stop window is now open. Pass Courtney and Wilson together. How's that for a move in turn one? Leon started. 23rd, he's up to 12. Gartanda, that is absolutely frustrating. Oh yes, yeah, it's one of those things, it's broken something in the front end and jumped on the brakes for turn three and it took off for the sandpit, so um, disappointing because we won't get back out and get points in this one, so uh, we'll fight on tomorrow. You said uh, over the radio, what is it with this place? Yeah, well it went down here from here last year and it looks like it's done the same, but um, you know, we'll just fight on and uh, get some points tomorrow. Right. Thanks. Let me tell you something, that will be the first time in 2007 that Garth Tander finishes outside the points. All 20 races he's been inside the top 15, not to mention winning 10 of them. Here's Jamie Wincup. 
and looked like a pretty effective, efficient stop for Jamie. So early runners coming in and processing and out they go again. Lee Holdsworth, who's had a great weekend so far. Half a second, the margin scaife to Kelly. That lap for scaife was a 198, 110.0 for Todd Kelly. So you quickly begin to see the tyre performance drop away here and the lap speed just leeches away slowly. 10-3 for Rick Kelly. Uh, Winterbottom's coming to the pits, here he is. Followed by Jason Richards, Jason Bright. And it's a massively long lane to transit to get down to the working area where the crews await. There you go, mate, Way you go. Watch it for late speed. You guys watch out for the BOC car leaving. Right rear was a bit slow for Jason Richards then. That's where you feel it, don't you? Trundling back down pit lane to rejoin the race. And it's always an awkward rejoin here because you end up arriving right on the race line for the braking approach to turn two. We've seen a number of incidents this weekend and in years gone by. Neil, we just heard a lot of the team saying to their drivers, foot on the brake, foot on the brake, as you well know. Quite a quite a long and lengthy pit lane, but it's down the hill. They've actually got to wind back their pit lane speed, speed limiters back to about 38, because if you're doing 40 at pit entry, you keep the, uh, your foot into it and just leave it on the limiter. You'll do 42 at the end, and as we know, you'll get pinged. This is the margin, first to second, looking rearward from Mark Scaife's car. Stephen Richards in, in behind him, one of the Jim Beam entries. Greg Murphy, James Courtney. Fabian Coulthard, they're all in for service. It's an encouraging run so far for Murph. Good stop. Richards in the Castrol Ford goes out. A great stop for Greg Murphy and Will Davison. Listen to the cars really struggling to get traction in first gear as they leave the lane. It's dirty down there, 600 plus horsepower, hard to get it to the road and get mobile. So Scaife, Todd and Rick Kelly remain out there. I come on, pit this lap, pit this lap. Not for long. Mark went to the US in between the Queensland round of this round of car number 20 is off the road, Paul Dumbrell. So they all come in and pit. He's off the road at turn eight at what we used to call Sutton's Corner. He's gone in there backwards and parked it up against the tyre barrier. So the rest of them will now come in for process. Rick Kelly's in, that's Jeff Gregg walking through the background. Team BOC cars in. It's going to be a yellow sector car. Nice stop from those guys. Look at that. There's the instructions. Rick Kelly comes out side by side from Jamie Wincup. He's had to yield. He's on the dirty side of the road. He almost ran out of road. He had to come right out of the throttle then. No steering at all on that dirty stuff. And. Yeah, we got that, mate. We got that. Need to press, press. Make sure we cut presses also to close the gap up. Because yeah. everyone's firing into pit lane. So they're trying to make net gain. I got caught a few years ago trundling around really slowly when the SC boards are out and you can actually lose track position. You've kind of got to hustle until you get up to the back of the safety car train. And not only that, they're making sure that Rick Kelly hustles Jamie Wincup. Looks as though Wincup doesn't need any encouragement. So now Scaife, Todd Kelly, Craig Lowndes, everybody comes in. Be interesting to see what this is all done to the order. Rock star in front of the car. No, it had to be quick and it was. And they've had to queue the cars up, so they've had to hold Todd. Otherwise, if they left him out there, he would have been stranded. He'll get burned in this, but he would have got burned a lot worse if they'd done it any differently. Yeah, yeah, mate, stay, stay calm, calm, stay, stay calm. calm. Matty Crawford saying, stay calm. You see them all filing by. Here, cautious of the badge, cautious of the badge. Cameron McConville goes out in front of Max Wilson. Dean Canto's also gone out. Remember, they have a single boom for servicing. 
and if you think it through, if you leave Todd Kelly out there, he ends up stuck behind a compressed field. He'd end up last in the field, so queuing him up is the most efficient way, but it's probably lost him some track position. You should be able to see it. I reckon he's lost a fair yeah, there few he is. places. Yeah, he's about fifth or sixth. Uh, so. Have a breathe, have a drink. That's why Matty Crawford was saying, just be cool, mate, don't freak out. So Dumbrell pretty deep in at turn eight. Here's something to contemplate. We were under full course yellow, and Jamie Wincup went underneath Rick Kelly at turn two, which you're not allowed to do. So that'll be something that will be no doubt debated. Did he go underneath him, or did he? That'll be what they look at and discuss. And depending on which side you're on, <laughs> the answer will vary. <laughs> yes and no. Let's have a look. So Kelly rejoins, and you'll see Wind Cup come zooming into picture on the right-hand side of your screen now. Now, who's got the advantage there? Umpire Crumpton? I'm going to defer to Umpire Schenken <laughs> and others upstairs. Oh, it looks like a passing move to me. Is this something they'll take a look at? Remember, Rick Kelly came out of pit lane with the instructions to hustle. Wind Cup came flying down. This is under safety car conditions, full course yellow. The reason we're looking at it is when there's a full course yellow, the whole track is, is under yellow, and under yellow, you're not allowed to pass. Once Rick had passed the end of that concrete merge point, he's on the racetrack. So the question will be, did Jamie Wind Cup slide on by? It looks first glimpse as though the answer is yes that's something the race control will need to have a look at there is Todd Kelly remember he had to wait in pit lane he's now down to seven uh, did you see Jamie took a jump and Mark just held him bottled up a little bit there and then he went but he might have lost a bit of momentum Mark Scaife in that one because Wind Cup certainly got a quick hustle on look at them all diving to the inside protecting their line Jamie Winkup's being very aggressive. And so too is Alan Gurr. The Irwin Tools entry takes the inside line. Around turn three. Out the back of Scape's car. There's car double eight. Rick Kelly, Winterbottom, Stephen Richards, Greg Murphy. What a net gain of spots for Murphy from 16... Uh, 16th now up to 6th. And a problem here for... James Courtney's hit something or someone. Yeah, I heard Jason Bright very bitterly unhappy on the radio, so I suspect there's been a bit of an issue back in the pack after that restart. Well, they were pretty close. Bright was in 11th on that lap, and Courtney got himself up to 13th. So it looked nice to me nice as though there was front and rear damage to Courtney. It's a brand new car. Car number four for this weekend. Look at Rick Kelly applying some pressure on Wind Cup. And the two FPR teammates, Winterbottom and Richards, have a little bit of a gap on Murphy. This will be the incident. Oh, there's a three-way crunch. That's ridiculous. Now I know why Jason Bright was howling on the radio. That's yeah, uh, no, no, Steve Panto in the middle of it. There's some stupidity out there. I mean, it's not hard to work out that you'll have a nose to tail shunt down at turn three on a restart. Now, Bright has also ended up, I'm pretty sure, having contact with the rear of Craig Lowndes' car. That's, that's just madness. Don't know who was doing what to who down there, but there's a whole bunch of cars involved and uh, to see a car get hit that hard from behind is not good. The answer to your question, did Jamie Wincup make the move under yellow against Rick Kelly? The answer is no, according to okay, Jamie, the officials. Okay, Jamie, you've got the face, mate, so head down and uh, let's do good luck, mate. So no penalties there. That'll be an interesting debate when we get to the end of this race then. Kelly got him anyway. Kelly's up to second. And he did it on the outside at turn three, so that's pretty impressive. I don't know, you know, you know what that looks like to me? That Jamie could well have 
addressed what may have been an infringement. I wouldn't be surprised if they felt they needed to address that. So uh, rather than go to a hearing at the end of the race and lose a spot, I think you'll find Wind Cup has just, uh, instead of running it all the way to the edge, just decided to back away because it, you would, you'd never outbreak somebody on the outside in turn three. So Rick just steamed on by. That's been So confirmed. I think Triple Eight have actually you know, handled it themselves. Yep. Lee Holdsworth's got a great battle here against Jason Bright. He's won it so far. So Holdsworth has moved up to 11th. Bright slots back a bit. And you're right, Cromley. That has been confirmed. So Team Vodafone addressed the situation themselves. Scaife, meanwhile, has a 0.6 of a second lead over Rick Kelly. Eastern Creek was where Mark Scaife turned it around after the horror at Winton. And now he returns to the other track in Sydney and leads the way here in race one. Rick Kelly lost the championship lead to his teammate at Queensland. Alan Gurr and Paul Dumbrell's cars both being looked at for loose bodywork at the moment. Keep an eye on those for you. Well, Kim Jones, a uh, real disappointment for Andrew. you got problems with the car that stemmed back to an incident at the end of pit lane. Yeah, it all comes about from the safety car. And as my mate out the back keeps saying, um, you know, to let the safety car leave the end of pit lane when there's a safety car already on the circuit and hold up the people that are trying to take advantage of the safety car incident, that's what you do, you jump. To hold those cars up, go two corners and then let them pass, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And while we now, one of the team BAC cars is parked here with a vent diff, severe damage, should never have been there. We go out, we're in 21st position. We should really be in about 10th, but the safety car, thing you know sometimes as my mate at the back keeps saying what the hell are the officials doing he's got a lot of mates out the back hasn't he kid might have many in race control <laughs> this will davis at seventh position in front of him is greg murphy who told neil crompton pretty straight out that this car wasn't suiting him he's still looking for it his driving style, well, he's managed to muscle his way right through the field, Murph. A bit of cutting and pasting going on. That's that body work that we spoke about on uh, car number 20. We're just going to grind oh. the bits away. Sounds oh. like a dentist, does <laughs> Fingernails on the blackboard stuff, that one. <laughs> Boys, I said as soon as I know, I'd let you know, but I still don't think I know. It's the Toll HSV dealer team. I've just been speaking to Matty Nelson. It is a suspension failure that Garth Dander had to put him out of the race. The actual componentry, they're still not willing to say publicly. They probably are unlikely to, but it's certainly a racetrack where you spend a lot of time building curbs. There are some very hefty curbs that are quite high. Uh, sawtooth curbs that really give the car a big rattle. It's probably at the moment a bit of pill to swallow obviously but it's probably not a bad thing for them because when they they've been in a strong position as a team throughout the championship may as well learn if there's a weakness in the cars now that when you get to a couple of the critical long distance races and find yourself uh, one out and one back in the garage solving a big riddle so there may be some benefit out of it in the long run. Here it is again in replay you don't really see except the front left has a bobble. You actually saw the outside of the mudguard rattling in the front of the spoiler all moving accordingly as the wheel, you know, went through some kind of a shimmy and it was enough to cut Garth off the road. The way things are going with Rick Kelly in second position. By the end of this race, if he stays higher than uh, seventh place, he will take back the championship lead. Rick's running with him. He was a tenth quicker on that lap. One minute 9.8 for Rick, one minute 9.9 .9 for Mark, and it's still half a second officially at the start-finish line. Wind Cup hasn't quite got the pace. 10.1 that lap. Winterbottom, 10.4. Stephen Richards, 10.5. Greg Murphy, 10.7. So Murph's about three quarters of a second away in absolute pace at the moment. That's what he was talking to us about earlier in the day. Just 
not quite having a car that suits his rhythm at the moment. Here's the bodywork I spoke of earlier on Alan Gurr's Irwin Tools oh, entry. Hey. And uh, he picked up the inside curbing down there at turn two, which is what set off the oscillation in the car. Scaife, the leader. And Kelly's definitely getting closer. The aim of the game at Oran Park is to drive the car really straight. Have a breathe, mate. Have a drink. Try not to slide it up onto the main straight or the tyres deteriorate to the point where you spend almost the whole time sliding. Very late apex at turn two. That's the point where you cease entering the corner and begin to exit. This is where Garth went straight ahead at turn three. Boys, I've just been down talking to Barry Hay, the crew chief at Stone Brothers Racing. I said, geez, you build tough cars after watching the impact with James. He said, I don't know what it is about James, how to get away from that new car feel. He said, you'd never lend him your car to go down the pub and it'd come back wrecked. Four was the margin between Scaife and Kelly last time across the line. And on this lap, Scaife's made a couple of tenths in the first sector. On board with Lowndes. This is what it's like to battle down the order in the pack, and it's hard work. He's tenth, tucked in behind Jason Richards in the Tasman entry, and that's Todd Kelly just in front. If you're wondering what happened to our pole sitter, he got swapped a little at the line, and then when the safety car came out, HRT had to queue the cars up to process the compulsory pit stop, and Todd really lost out in that manoeuvre. And once you drop track position, this is a graphic illustration of what happens. Oh, Craig, has a look. Also pinpoints, Neil, the bumps in this circuit. Certainly not as bad as Queensland Raceway, but notice some there at the end of... Uh main straight into turn one. It's a massive bump at one. It's a pretty big one on the exit of three here as well. Another big one at four where the whole front of the car comes off the road. It takes a long time to pick the throttle up here and you virtually jump off the bridge right here for a moment the car's airborne. You use the little ripple strip on the right to just keep the car pegged on line. You hook the right wheels across onto the concrete patch here. You use the concrete on the left here at seven as well and at eight. Concrete again at nine, so you're very hungry with the amount of racetrack that you need to use at Oran Park. It's endless wheel work here. It's a brief pause on the main straight. And a lot of undulation, a lot of left-right, a lot of hard work on the suspension. When you look at a suspension trace on the data at these events, so Craig has another look down there at two. You know, there's a frantic amount of movement under the car. Might have a look at him down here at three, Lowndes. Didn't get it done. Well, look at a battle group from sixth to tenth. Greg Murphy pushed his way up from 16th. At the tail of this little group, Craig Lowndes has pushed his way up from 23rd to 10th. Will Davison's in there. is really gnawing on the back of Richards at the tail of this group and he's just searching high and low at the moment if he gets half a chance he'll sneak underneath he's strong between turns one and two he's had a look down there he's also been looking here at the final corner it's customary with Craig because he turns the car in with so much pace he's had a better run this time coming off turn 11 We'll see what he can do, you watch, he'll stay high and wide. 24 laps to go, Todd, 24, be smooth mate, be smooth. Here he goes. He jumped out a bit early, but he, he wants to try and do it in here, in this little gap between turns one and two, or down here on the right at turn three. But Jason will drive down the right just to make sure it's not easy. And it's a good braking performance from Richards, he's not giving anything away to the triple eight car under brakes. talk of the engine climbing the hill there, third gear, the temptations to go back to second but it just makes wheels spin. Craig stays in third, lost a little bit of ground there at six.
Sophia Davison pulled away just a touch there from Todd Kelly. A little touch from Jason Richards. And listen, like Lowndes just got to 100% throttle a little bit earlier then. That's going to give him the incentive he needs. And he's up the inside. There's the job done. Nice work, mate. Nice work. Time to just readjust the mirror. Jason will have a look up the inside in response. But Craig covers. There wasn't a lot of time to adjust the mirror, so Craig Lowndes moves up to ninth. Tasman Motorsports, Jason Richards back to 10th. Mark Scaife still leads the race from Rick Kelly. The gap, 1.3 seconds. Lee Holdsworth started fourth, got boxed around a bit, finds himself 11th. Just 24 years of age. in the championship. Have a breeze, mate. Well, we're always trying to answer the questions in the first opening lap, of course, when we saw young Jack Perkins spear off. It was because of this. It's not the first time teammates have come together. Shane Price hit him, and this is the result. Have a look at the damage on this wheel. It's actually still amazing that this tyre is still inflated. Quite heavy damage sustained to the front of his car, and that's put uh, Shane Price out of the race. One minute, 10.7 for Mark Scaife, that lap 10.5 for Rick Kelly. 1.1 seconds, the gap. So Scaife just taking a little pressure off in the last couple of laps while we were away looking at that battle involving Craig Lowndes. His teammate, Jamie Whitcup, is keeping them honest. He's another 0.8 behind Rick Kelly at the moment, and he's matching them for lap speed now, which is a trend we've seen through the year, that the 888 car has good tyre condition in the back third of the race. Stephen Richards, meantime, is fifth ahead of Greg Murphy and behind his teammate, Mark Winterbottom. I think that was Andrew Jones' car, or Simon Wills now rejoining. Stephen Richards was seventh in practice, eighth in qualifying. He's now fifth in the race. His teammate, Mark Winterbottom. Ten four for Scaife on that lap. Kelly picked the pace up a little and Scaife has responded. It's 1.2 seconds now between the two of them. And there's five drivers there in the one minute tens. Once you get to Greg Murphy, they're in the mid 11s. And they stay in the mid 11s until you get to the 20th position, which is Alan Gurr. And after that, the times are all over the shop in the 12s. Mark coming over the top of the dog leg at 9 and 10. This is the final corner. Third gear, turn 11. The infamous wall with a lot of signatures on it. Have a breathe, have a drink. Let's have a listen to Mark Scape at work around this track. He's 1.3 seconds behind. Make that 1.4 now. Jamie Winkup is leading the Ford fight. He is third. Mark Winterbottom is fourth. His teammate Stephen Richards behind him. Here's the gaps. You can see Winterbottom that you just made mention of. There's the gap back to Stephen Richards, Greg Murphy. Then the BOC car's out of step, but it's Will Davison next in the queue. Todd Kelly and Craig Lowndes. That's an interesting battle. Jason Richards, Lee Holdsworth and Jason Bright. Then back to Stephen Johnson, Fabian Coulthard, Jason Barguana, Max Wilson, Dean Canto, Cam McConville. So that gets us to 18th. And then Shane Van Gisbergen for Team Kiwi in position 19. So not a bad start to your V8 supercar career. And I know a lot of people on the other side of the Tasman will be watching and cheering for this young bloke. A Stone Brothers Racing prepared Ford Falcon, Team Kiwi license and livery and an 18 year old at the helm from Auckland doing a pretty fair job.
Well, he's made himself up 10 spaces since this race started. He's pretty good in practice yesterday. Had some good tyres underneath him, but he finished uh, the practice session 15th. And then uh, really knew he was in the main game when he found himself 29th in qualifying, but back up to 19th now, Shane Van Gisbergen. You get the feeling that there's gonna be some action around this part of the racetrack. Greg Murphy in position six. Davison's been hanging on to him. Todd Kelly looks as though he's under attack, and he is, from Craig Lowndes, who's already got by Jason Richards. So Murphy looks comfortable enough leading this group. It's not a bad run for Greg when you consider that he was pretty mopey when I caught up with him early on, but he's a very good racer, and he often takes great advantage of a race where a few people can trip over. The car's got reasonable pace, but not cracking pace of the first five cars. It's good enough to be in this bunch at the moment. And this little battle, as you pointed out, Matthew, is a ripper. It's Lowndes gnawing away at the back of Todd Kelly, Campbell Little on the left of screen. Murph's previous best race result this year was a fourth at Winton. So sixth at the moment. He might improve on that as the weekend wears on. Everyone playing and waiting and what? Uh, Murph's controlling it all there, but uh, we're to go here. Okay. Campbell Little keeping a lid on Craig Lowndes at the moment. We'll have a look up the inside here. It's his favourite spot to pass between one and two. He's very strong in that area. Todd knew it, braked a little bit later, just gave himself enough margin to survive down there. Tell you about a good performance to it at this time is uh, Fabian Coulthard is inside the points in 14th. He started in 26th. Paul Morris, of course, is in pit lane. But the team Cyrame Wines entry car number 39 after being out of the saddle for a couple of months while Stephen while Stephen Ellery got some time. Young Fabian Coulthard, the Kiwi, has jumped back in and is amongst the points see the amount of sliding that Todd's car was doing off turns five and six. Interesting technique difference between Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife you notice at this racetrack as well. Scaife grabs fourth gear on the run up to the bridge, leaves the car in fourth all the way to the final corner. Lowndes on the other hand leaves it in third for much longer, off the bridge, grabs fourth briefly, back to third at Sutton's, so he does a couple more gear changes. It's probably a little more likely to excite the rear tyre. It's a difference in technique, the preference of both drivers. He's only got two points in the bank. This man, this is Coulthard. He put him uh, race two, he finished 15th in WA. So if he can hold on to that, it'll be his best race finish. He's 14th at the moment. Scaife, 1.9 seconds. Is the lead over Rick Kelly. Lowndes chipping away at Todd Kelly. The defending champion at this circuit. That's fourth gear that he's just grabbed on the run up to the dog leg. Third gear for the final corner. fair performance isn't it to be able to climb up from his lowly qualifying position to get inside the top 10. You can never discount Lowndes' racing capabilities. Neil, a moment ago you were talking about uh, Greg Murphy's performance sitting up in sixth place at the moment. I went to have a chat to the Tasman boys to see what Greg Murphy's saying in the car and they said there is deathly silence, nothing at all being said by Greg Murphy who, it's not unusual for him to have a chat to the crew but they're not telling him how many laps to go, anything. He is just totally focused on getting a good result at this race. That's what he wants. Once you get this kind of starting position for the subsequent race tomorrow, race two, you're in much better shape, so if they can smarten the car up, make a few changes to it overnight from things that they learn in this event, it'll put them in better shape for two and three. Make sure you check out bigpondsport.com. We are live and on-demand sport, including, of course, the V8 supercars.
34 year old Kiwi Greg Murphy. Isn't that a view? In the back of Jeff's head or the race cars coming <laughs> off the final corner. No, we liked it better the other way, Jeff. Yeah. Turn around. <laughs> so his two cars are running well at the moment. Look at this, having a look at one and two again, but he puts him on the outside of turn three, Craig Lowndes. Hard to do it from there. And Todd knows that. Kelly defends eighth position. They've had a couple of good battles this year. Eastern Creek was a ripper, and they've had some notable battles in the past. They trust each other. Just shows you how quickly your fortunes can change in this race, especially when there's a safety car involved. Todd Kelly was cruising along quite finely in second position when the safety car scrambled the field. He had to wait for Mark Scaife to complete his pit stop. The result is that Todd finds himself in eighth. We're looking at Jason Bright in 12th. Yeah, Matty, his car has got some substantial damage on the front. He was uh, not totally involved, but sort of in and around that James Courtney incident, which we saw earlier. The team are monitoring the engine temperatures now on the car. At the moment, they say they're OK. Chris Jules tried to make light of it and say, our new car's got, an well, an aerodynamic look of a Volvo. Looks like Todd's just beginning to now get seriously vulnerable to Lowndes. You can see the back of the car sliding a bit more. Still 13 laps to go, so I reckon that uh, Lowndes has a big chance down at one and two or down at turn three on this next lap or two. Normally when this kind of battle's going on, the guys in front of them will pull away, but I guess it shows you just how much Todd is fighting and doing a good job fighting. I can see struggling for years, but we need to put some pressure on him. There you go. That they've still managed to keep within visual Davison and Murphy ahead of them. So Campbell's observation's the same. He's struggling for rear, put the pressure on him. Craig's well aware of that. He can see it. 11 laps to go, Todd. 11, sorry, 12 laps, 12 laps. Matthew Crawford, Todd Kelly's engineer. Here he is again up the inside, looking between one and two. Little touch there, just crosses him up. Now he'll have a look down the inside at three, but that'll get Todd Kelly's aggro levels up when he gets crossed up, so... Oh no, he's left space, I'm surprised. That, in the end, it was relatively easy. So I think Todd's gone, you know what, I'm sliding, I'm vulnerable. I'm better off to try and stay in position than be slipped off the road. What about Jason Richards? Just goes howling up behind Thank Kelly there. Look pretty calm. So Campbell's saying well done. Matthew's uh, staying, staying doing a bit calm. of counselling. And now it's Jason Richards who'll work, work on the back of uh, Todd Kelly. Holdsworth wants to go with him. So Craig Lowndes now goes up to eighth from a starting position of 23rd. At the front, Scaife, 1.1 seconds. Rick Kelly second. Jamie Wincup third. Mark Winterbottom, Stephen Richards, fourth and fifth. Greg Murphy, sixth. Davison, seventh. Lowndes is eighth. Todd Kelly. And then Jason Richards there on your screen. Someone had a big lock-up down there at turn two on the way in then. Not sure which one of them it was. Oh, Murphy's Murphy. I think Murphy was in a bit of trouble there. It was Murphy because he's gone now from sixth back a couple of spots, back to ninth. So Murph's had a lock up. Davison has gone shooting through. Now the two Tasman Motorsport cars find themselves in positions nine and 10. Yeah, there was something brewing there with Will Davison and you know, Murph has come off a little bit second best in all this. I didn't quite get the full thread of it. There's been a bit of shuffling in the pack there, and there was a mistake made by somebody. There was a lot of blue smoke down there at two. You heard the screech. It said trouble. Let's see if we can catch a view of it from Craig Lowndes' car. There you go. Here to go, mate. Here to go. Yeah, so it was uh, 
Craig on his own. And that released uh, Will Davison on board here with uh, Mark Scaife. 1.2 seconds is his margin over Rick Kelly. It's the kind of margin you can't really afford to relax with. And in fact, if anything, Rick is now starting to fall into the clutches of Jamie Wincup. On the last sector split for Jamie, he was 0.4 faster than Rick Kelly. Look at the amount of rubber build-up, the marbles on the edge of the road. You can't afford to go off race line here. You'd be in trouble. Wincup's right with him now. And I'll, at this rate, Wincup will have a crack at him. Eric Pender talking to Rick. And on this rate, the man on the left will surrender the championship lead to his teammate. It was a 10 point difference that Garth had over Rick Kelly coming into this race. Garth finishes out of the points here and going on positions at the moment, Rick will bank 20. He's sliced uh, half a second out of Rick in the last four laps when you tally up those numbers on the bottom. Five times out of the seven rounds so far we've had, the winner of race one has gone on to win the round. This is turn eight. Kelly's good over the top of the hill though, he pulled the margin again over Wind Cup, but Wind Cup's pretty good, strong here in the final corner and gets off the final corner well. So it means that at the northern end of the circuit where Jamie will probably be able to do the most damage. 1 minute 11.2 for Mark Scaife. Half a second quicker than Rick Kelly on that lap and he now eases the margin out to 1.7 seconds. Wind Cup clearly fast at the moment but only in some sections of the racetrack. See how much the drivers toss the cars off the edge of the road around this track to try and find grip. Look at that down at turn eight. I mean, Jamie almost has the entire car across to the left side of the road. He's not strong over the dog leg, and that's what protects Kelly when they get to the final corner. But he's really good at the other end of the track. As it stands at the moment, the championship points would look like this. Kelly will then take a 10 point lead over his teammate who had a 10 point lead over Kelly before they came here. <laughs> I think I follow. Let me make it simple. Either way, at the end of this round, only Rick or Garth can lead the championship. There's just not enough points for Jamie Wincup and Co to catch yet. Scape goes by, Rick goes by, Jamie goes by. The gap goes back to 1.4 seconds, so they made up three tenths. Yeah, they're kind of seesawing at the moment. Rick was much faster on that lap than Mark. He did an 11.2. Wind Cup also did an 11.2. Winter Bottom we're looking at in fourth, 11.7 for Stephen Richards. 11-1 for Will Davison and Craig Lowndes. They're the fastest cars in this lead bunch at the moment. Sixth and seventh, here they are. Simon Wills just went through, he's out of the loop. Now they're starting to really stretch it out, aren't they? They had that battle pack around here for quite a while. Murphy made a little mistake, cost himself three positions, but he's really turned this uh, weekend around already. Rick's just got a clear advantage over the top of the hill and the direction change and across the bumps. And that just protects him in that final corner where Jamie might be tempted to pass down the inside. And it gives Rick breathing space by the time they get back down to the northern end of the circuit here at turns one and two. Jamie works his way back. It kind of gets to him by the time they get to turn eight, but it's just one of those seesaws at the moment, not really resolving. 
and the top guys, oh, Jamie hit one more millimetre and he's got the right rear in the dirt. 11-4 for Scaife, 11-4 for Rick Kelly, 11-4 for Jamie Wincup. I thought I was watching Louds for a second then. You, you put a bit of opposite lock on <laughs> in the commentary box, but it didn't help him. Just about fell off the chair. Here it is again, watch this. You can see it go and go and go. Whoa! Just got it. In fact, he did get on the dirt then. He would have had to come out of the trouble a fair bit. Great shot. Kelly's pounced on those two little mistakes. There was just a little puff of smoke there from Wing Cup as well. He managed to dig another tenth out of Scaife's lead. So Rick Kelly looks to have fought off most of the challenge from Wing Cup. The question is, with five laps remaining, does he have great enough? Effort, mate. Great effort, four to go. Remember what we spoke about. We spoke about smoothness, letting it flow, letting it flow. Does he have enough in the tank to get hold of Scaife? That was Eric Pender talking to Rick Kelly. Talking about smoothness, it was a bit of a wild lap from Jamie then. He had the right rear on the dirt on the exit of turn two. He had two wheels in the dirt after the dog leg. And you can tell that he's trying very, very hard. The car's at its absolute limit. And it's another example this weekend of, for some reason, Triple Eight not quite getting it right in practice and qualifying and paying the track position price. If this car that we're looking at, the Vodafone car, was first or second at the moment, it's absolutely got the pace to lead the field, but it's difficult to do it from that position. See, two wheels in the dirt again. He's really having to drive the car, probably a little over-aggressively to be able to maintain touch at the moment possibly a little frustrated as well. Take a look at the gap between third and fourth. Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards, the Orcon Ford credit car and the Castrol Ford, have both effectively had this track position to themselves for most of the race. I'd say about 90% of this race, they've been out there just doing it on their own. They've had nobody to battle with, <laughs> no, nobody to get in trouble with, aside from a wall or two. And really, they've been under little pressure it's been very, very solid. It's that kind of team, FPR. Winterbottom will put 15 points in the bank. Richards, another 13. Wasn't that a good insight, though, into Rick Kelly from Eric Pender? We always hear him talk about think, drink, keep it calm, keep it smooth. But then there was a little insight there. Remember what we spoke about. Where, what, three laps to go. So these guys obviously sit down and not only talk about the start of the race, they talk about the middle of the race, they talk about the end of the race, 120 kilometres. So they've got each other focused oh, all the way. Mistake Jason, there for Jason Richards. Richards and it lets Holdsworth by. And break lock up on the front right at the critical time was enough for Jason to just end up running wide, dropping a spot. It was just a little blip, wasn't it? There was hardly anything to it. Holdsworth goes up to 10th. Remember the Murphy lost ground when he had a little break lock up between turns one and two as now James Courtney passes Shane Van Giesbergen. All the damage on Courtney's car from that nose to tail incident down at turn three and the safety car restart. James now moving to 19th, those two swapping spots. Not a bad run from Jamie Wincup, who was also fighting off uh, a cold. I'm not sure, I don't recall whether you mentioned that at all, Matthew, but uh, he hasn't been feeling 100% this last week or so. He was still feeling a bit dusty in uh, practice yesterday. So this will be a tester for him. At least it hasn't been too hot. Well, they're talking about showers in this area later on this afternoon and a genuine possibility of uh, continuation of showers for tomorrow, race day number two. And uh, a wet Oran Park would be an interesting prospect, change things again. Paul Dumbrell had an incident at turn eight, which triggered the safety car, so he's just out there making sure that all the systems are in place to last lap, mate. Last lap. reload for tomorrow. Mark Scaife will take a 0.78 second lead into the last lap. So Rick Kelly has chopped it away. He took it out to almost two seconds at one stage. Skay for Rick Kelly and Jamie Wincup. All the fight has 
been from those positions two down. Scaife made his biggest move at the start when he lassoed his teammate, followed Garth Tander down to turn one. Scaife turned third into second and then benefited from Tander's steering failure. And since then, it's just been steady as she goes. You know, when Mark Scaife first raced here at Oran Park, Rick Kelly was just five years old. Experience pays off. Mark Scaife. Really good effort. That's what we needed to do. He's off to a good start at Oran Park. What a controlled performance. That is his fourth race win of the year. His 15th race victory at this circuit. Kelly gets second and the championship lead back. Jamie Wincup gets third at 17 points. Winterbottom and Richards so consistent. Will Davison and Craig Lowndes. Five forwards from positions three down to seven included. Todd Kelly, Greg Murphy and Lee Holdsworth who started in fourth, finishes 10th. That's the third straight time that he's finished 10th in a race over the last two rounds.